Do some roasting. Ready, set. What is going on, guys? Joy Franzel here with Flex Training Systems and the chat, as usual. Today, I wanted to kind of talk about something that doesn't look like much at first, but when I get into it, you're gonna, it's gonna give you guys some perspective and hopefully help you out. Um, I wanted to talk about the highs and lows of training, uh, both figuratively and like literally, like you know what you're experiencing um, in terms of like weight on the bar versus emotion. Um, what inspired this post was uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was watching um, a podcast with Aaron Rodgers from the Green Bay Packers, and he was talking about um, the highs in football versus the lows in football, and if you want to, like, you kind of got to be, you know, stay in the middle, and then just keep going till you get to the end, right? Stay in the middle, don't go too high, don't go too low, um, and I'm going to talk about, like, what are the pr what are the pros and cons, right, of that, and... and Oh my God, Hopefully dead. give you something. Oh, my man still nutting in the chat, interrupting this lit video. What's good, man? Shout out to still nutting on IG. Anyway, we're going to continue with this video. So we're talking about the highs and lows of training today. Um, let me give you an example. A high in training can be you come into the gym and you hit a PR and you didn't expect it, right? So you had like no expectation. You hit a PR and now you're super fucking amped about it, right? Um, a high in training uh, or in the process can be, you know, your, let's say your body weight, um, you know, let's say your body weight is like super low one day and, you know, you're trying to diet and you're like, oh man, my, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make mate really make weight really easy for my meat or something like that. Right. And then let's say, um, uh, a high on meat day can be that you, you compete and you blow all your numbers out of the water and you beat this person that you've just been like dying to compete against and like you beat them and you're super super happy about it um have you guys ever heard of people that they go in and they compete or they you know and then right after the meet they have like depression or they're like really sad or they get kind of like the post meat blues or they just have no motivation now and you know they just feel like kind of lost like okay like now what right like i was on this such big high that I, you know, I experienced this thing and made me so happy, and now I just, I just, I'm like depressed. Like, why, why is that? That's not that, you know, like why, like why does that happen, right? And then lows is literally going to be the opposite of everything I just said. Um, your weight is not in a good spot, so you're worried about me day. You go into the gym and you get stapled by a weight you shouldn't have attempted. Um, you know, you go into me day and maybe you had high expectations and then you screw up everything, right? Um, that is going to be a less rare scenario. I think for most people, usually the lows are going to come from something that's happening in the gym, right? We're very attached to like the numbers that we put up and things like that, um, which is a habit that you want to kind of get rid of. Uh, you know, you come into the gym and you don't have a good day. So you feel really sad about it. You're kind of depressed. Um, what, what eventually I would like people to learn to do is like you go in, you're warming up and you're like, you know, your glutes kind of tight and your IT bands bugging you and things are kind of weird. So you're just like, all right, I need to chill out today. Um, and then just like put on a song that you like, lower the weight, get the work in and get out of there. You know what I mean? Don't dig that ditch deeper than it needs to be. You obviously need to recover, you know, so you want to get out of there. Um, so the goal is to move forward and always get better. Highs become lows. So an example of that is, let's say 600 is a PR for you. Um, and eventually, if you continue on your path, 600 will no longer be a PR. It's just going to be like a regular weight or it's going to be a bad day for you. Like you go and you feel like shit, you can still hit 600. There was a time when that was a high for you, right? Um, hold on, let me turn this music down real quick on my end. And on your end, I suppose. Da -da 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 -da, technical difficulties. All right. Um, and then, so a low becomes an old high, right? So let's say you go in, um, did I say that right? Low becomes an old high. Yeah, so then, then you go in and let's say you're stronger now and like you're near PR 650 and like you feel like shit and you can only hit like 580. There was a time where that low was your old high, right? Um, so kind of putting everything in a, putting everything in a nice little package. You don't want to get overly um, attached or excited or, you know, 
it, I think it's good to feel emotion and it's good to know to to feel those moments that make you feel alive right like there's very few times I've experienced it in powerlifting but it's like when you're at a meet and it's prime time and I got a lifter going out that's gonna take a record that nobody has ever done and we've been working on this for like six months right and the whole room is watching you and it's like you're about to push a limit and break a barrier and hit something that no one has done because it's a it's a record no one has done it literally no one has done it um, and it's a very rare special moment in that situation right but immediately after we feel that and that's all great we hit it boom we got a record da, 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 da. you want to feel that for a couple of days be happy about it live in that moment you know, people are going to be hitting up your social media over the next couple of days. You're going to go back to the gym on Monday. People are going to be like, hey, man, you killed that, whatever. But the mindset, I think, if you could just get right back on track and be like, okay, cool, that was nice. And it's nice that I hit those things. But I'm going to pull myself back down to that midline and I'm going to go back to the trenches. I'm going to get back to work and I'm going to start pushing, right? Now, let's use the let's use the opposite. Let's talk about a low point. Like I said, you go into the gym, you get stapled, you get humbled. All right, just make adjustments, right? Talk to your coach, do what you got to do. Get back to that midpoint. You're going to quit. It's okay to feel like sad. It's okay to feel emotion. Eventually, you won't feel emotion as much. You're not going to feel it either way, right? Maybe maybe the only time you get really excited about a lift is like, you know, twice a year, once a year, um, only at Worlds or somewhere very, someplace very, very rare, right? But when you hit those lows, you don't want it to spiral and to become something worse. So once you identify that, okay, obviously I'm emotional right now. I feel like shit. You need to get back to that midpoint. You need to get back to that point of productivity, right? If I could draw, you know, if you have a line in the middle and then you have your emotion like super happy and then super low. And then like if you go kind of, if you stay there for too long, it can start to like knock you off path, right? If you're sad all the time, you're not going to be motivated to do anything. You're not going to want to train. If you're super happy all the time, you might be not super happy, but if you're if you're so confident and you're like, oh, man, I'm the shit, maybe, you, maybe your technique starts to go to shit because now you're not disciplined or you start to become complacent or you're not doing accessories and you're just like, you know, no one's going to beat me or no one's going to touch me. I don't need to work as hard, whatever, right? So you can feel – it's okay to feel emotion. It's okay to feel high and to feel lows. But you always want to get yourself back to that point of productivity, that midline, because if you stay in the other end, you know, for too long, um, you're going to get you're, you're obviously farther away than uh, what you did to get yourself to experience that high in the first place. And then, like I said, over time, if you keep working hard, um, the the new high that you get is going to be what you used to hit on a bad day. And I don't know. I mean, I know if you guys have seen people post like. You know, I came in today and I wasn't feeling it and I only managed to hit this. But I remember a time when th when I'd be super happy to hit this weight, right? That just shows growth. It gives you some perspective. It's always nice to kind of look back, see how far you've come, you know, look at the, the growth over time and just appreciate your journey, right? Like, wow, on a, on a day where I don't feel well, I'm still able to do this, right? And then you can only imagine what you can hit when you're super fresh. Oh my God, I'm good. Thank you for the follow. Oh, click thank you sir um i hope this kind of makes sense um so like i said again for like the third time it's good it's good to feel emotion it's good to be to you know you're on that midpoint you work really really hard and then you finally get, get that payoff at the at the meet right or you finally get that payoff in training or whatever it is that you're doing and then you know same thing you're in the midpoint and then you know you have a couple bad days whatever but you understand why you kind of the honestly in my opinion if you can feel the lows and get back on track right away that is a sign of a very um mentally mature uh advanced lifter that is a trait that in my opinion not too been not too many people know how to do uh, or, or um you know it's just if everybody could do that you would see a lot less people uh complain or get pouty or whatever about having having bad days like i said it's good to feel and i think in my own experience the few the few moments i mean taylor talked about it on the podcast which is literally the last video that we did um when he pulled his third deadlift he was like one no no 74 uh had pulled this because it's a record 
Um, two, the whole room was looking at him. He was the last pull of the day. And he just wanted to experience that moment. And that was like such a nice, you know, good, good feeling for him. Um, and it is extremely rewarding, right? But you got to get right back into it. If he starts eating like shit right after and he doesn't go back to training, then one of those young killers that we talked about that are literally right on his heels, they are going to try to catch him, right? So, you know, experience it, but make sure you don't stay there too long because you need to get back to what got you there in the first place. Uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to say today. Quicker video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um hashtag stay the course hashtag stay the course in the comments down below if you guys haven't already go watch that taylor video also pr breaker is coming out with a uh it's like a gatorade type of type of thing right um it's a little bit more than that and i'm gonna be testing it and doing a video on it so keep an eye out for that as always use code flex 10 check the description if you want to learn more stuff thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you in the next one peace